On the show today, we have Armit Dietrich's Laura Petrolino talking about the importance of finding time to exercise to benefit your career. So check it out. Hey, let's talk about uh, staying healthy for a fine career. And you are a a uh, a fitting image of that because you are like into powerlifting, kickboxing, all types of cool stuff. And and but I'm just kind of get started here. What do you do to stay fit? But I mean, this type of because we're all busy, busy people. What do you do to stay fit? And and then how does it uh, how does it benefit your your job and your career? So I am a bodybuilder and a power lifter. Um, I compete in figure. So that's one of the divisions in bodybuilding competitions. Okay. Okay. And so that's my main focus. And then I do I do power lifting on the side for fun just oh, because it's really fun. fun. To lift really <laughs> because it's fun to be so small and lift really heavy things and is a very empowering thing. So but um, but all of them have the same goal. I spend most of my time in the gym, in the weight room lifting weights, doing the big lifts, like mm-hmm. deadlifts, quad, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then um, my, you know, some people do races and my race is getting up on stage and doing competition. Right so on, that's right my on. main sport. Okay. What about like diet and extra and, and rest and that type of stuff? Where does that kind of, pardon the pun, where does that weigh in in all of this as well? All super important. So it's really a lifestyle and, mm-hmm. you know, you have to have all the components in place. So it's the exercise, it's the rest, it's the sleep, and diet is a major part of it. So um, with bodybuilding, you have two kind of main phases. You have your improvement phase, which is when you're building and you're making your physique better and mm-hmm. improving on your weak points. Mm-hmm. And that's when you eat a lot. So diet's important because my calories are super high. I have to make sure I get enough in because if I'm not fueling my body correctly, not only do I not not have the energy to do what I need to do in the gym, but I can't build. Um, and then you have your cutting phase when you're prepping for a show, okay. and it is also important then because you, um, you know, you're obviously cutting and lowering your body fat and getting into so shape. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, I always tell people having a really great fitness lifestyle is about everything because if you aren't eating correctly and you're not sleeping well, you're not going to feel like going to the gym. Yep. That's the number one problem people have to get there mm-hmm. is because they're just not fueling themselves or giving themselves enough like rest or mental space to say, okay, I want to get in there and have a good time versus yeah. just like, plowing through exactly have a purpose <laughs> exactly exactly well, and that's what i tell my kiddos is like hey you know what food is fuel for your body it's like putting gasoline in your car it's not going to go if you don't put the right if you don't put the right stuff in it you know and if you put the wrong stuff in it it's not going to go either so right? so it's so food is so the proper diet and especially and i hear like rest sleep is like such a huge i don't want to say a trend but i mean getting good rest i mean everyone sleeps but but you hear i mean you used to read all these articles about people. Yeah, I only get three hours of sleep a night because I'm working, you know, 10 a.m. to, you know, whatever. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Like, hey, you know what? Get your eight hours, get your six hours, whatever is good for your body so you can be functional the next day instead of killing yourself. Right. It's not cool to not sleep. <laughs> it's, it's no longer the cool thing to be like, oh, yeah, I'm going on three hours a night. It's just not because you won't. I mean, you're not as good at your job yep. because your brain just doesn't function. You can't, you know, like you can't be active and get what do what you need to do in the gym. And whatever your goal is, if it's building muscle, if it's losing weight, if it's just being um, in better shape to run a race or um, do an obstacle course or mm-hmm. play with your kids. If you're not resting, your body's not recovering. And from a physiological standpoint, like you just can't do it. Your body can only do so much. Exactly. So it's I, you know, it's I think it's one of the most important parts of training, and it's something that people just kind of ignore. Let's 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 connect the dots here to a job or a career. How important is exercise and obviously diet and rest to one's career, to their job? I mean, how has it benefited you just uh, off the top? You know, I feel like I owe so much of my career to having a just fitness lifestyle overall. I was lucky because I was an athlete growing up. Mm -hmm. And so all those things, I mean, from a kind of mental and emotional standpoint, having like really being active and being in some sort of sport, it teaches you dedication. It teaches you passion and commitment. It really shows you to, it it helps you learn how to enjoy the struggle. Um, so the struggle, the struggle is part of the process and 
life and your job and everything is not supposed to be easy. Like you're when you really achieve something, it's because you worked really hard and struggled through that mm-hmm. those icky points. And I think any business owner or anyone that's had a career that they really care about will tell you that before they were successful and even after they were su- successful along the way growing, mm-hmm. like they've struggled a whole bunch. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, it teaches you to kind of stick to it and really find something that you love the struggle part of. Um, so from that standpoint, you get you get that aspect. And then really, when you're fueling your body the best to be the best you can be in the gym or out on the road or on your bike, you're also fueling it the best to be the best at your job if you don't have the endurance, mm-hmm. the mental strength, the um, the kind of focus that it provides. You just can't do it. And I think people really underestimate how valuable taking care of their body mm-hmm. is to being able to contribute to their job, their creativity, their productivity, everything in between. We're a system. Yeah. And if your body's not happy, your mind's not happy, <laughs> you won't you won't work as well with your team. You'll just not be as you know, you won't be in optimal condition to do your best, yeah. no matter what, no matter where you are. Yeah, no doubt. Because I, I mean, I when I if you know, I usually go for a run in the morning, or I swim, or something, something in the morning or during the day. If I don't do that, I see that the day is so much different, at least for me, and I'm sure it is for you and a lot of other people who are you know who exercise regularly in that type. Your my brain functions completely differently, and it's like I'm more creative, I'm more I guess engaged, um, I'm more alert, all that type of stuff. And when I don't exercise for a couple of days, then I'm, I can feel myself just kind of going down and feeling dull and drab and just not not getting it done, not being there. Oh, 100%. And, you know, even I think we spend so much time being kind of sedentary during the day when we're working. And I'll take moments. I mean, like, we encourage people in, on our team to, like, go out and take a walk if you need a to. Walk, like, take a break. Yes. I have a treadmill desk, and we were talking right before <laughs> that I will jump on it when I'm doing emails to just keep my brain going. I'll sometimes just take. 10, 15 minutes and do some stretching or I'll do like jumping jacks or burpees. If I just really need to get into that creative zone, you can't like, if you think about our ancestors and being cavemen, we weren't used to just sitting Sitting in front of (laughs) our bodies. were really, you know, like engineered to be active and take those breaks. And you can look at study after study that shows that when you get your heart pumping and you have that activity, it improves your brain function. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I always encourage people to just, if you're feeling sort of stagnant and you aren't thinking and you can't focus at work, like take 10 minutes, take 10 minutes. You have enough time Mm -hmm. to take 10, 15 minutes and take a break because you will come back so much more productive. Yep, yep, so yep. you have the time. You can't, you know, don't don't talk yourself out of that because that's the time you'll gain back and more so mm-hmm. if you just take the break and come back fueled to your brain. You just answered my next question because I was going to segue right into the time aspect of it because we're all we're all super busy with families, with job, with friends, with extracurricular activities and stuff afterward. How does somebody super busy? How do we find time? to to ex- to take a 10 minute walk. I mean, it sounds like, yeah, I'll just get up and go out for a walk for 10 minutes or whatever. But there's a lot of people that eh, might be kind of an iffy type thing to do. What's your advice here? So this is always something that people don't really like to hear because the truth is that you have the time. Everyone has the time. I there agree. is no one in the world that does not have the time. It's all about priorities. And so, you know, you really need, if you say to yourself, oh, I just, I don't have the time to exercise. Well, you need to challenge yourself and sit down and really look at where you do spend your time. Mm -hmm. Do you spend a half an hour in front of the TV at the end of the day? Do you, could you wake up a half an hour early? What, you know, do you surf on Facebook or, you know, just play around on Instagram or Facebook or social media at the end of the day? Not really with a purpose, but just kind of like you have the time. So you'll never think that you have the time unless you decide to make it a priority. Right. And once you make it a priority, you'll realize that, oh, okay, that it, that time has always been there. So for me, and then and then once you do that, it's also figuring out what works best for you. So for me, I, um, I exercise in the morning, and my routine is that I wake up at 4.35-ish, I'll eat, 
I work until about 7.38, then I go to the gym, take a nice little break, mm -hmm. get my workout in. I come back, I'm ready to go by like 9, 9.30 wow. before everybody else has really started. Yeah, you yeah. know. And then I go through my day of meetings. Um, and then at the end of every day, because I work from home, and so I really need that like separation of this is my work time and this is, and so at the end of every day, I go out for a walk. And just get fresh air, Good kind of you. process through the day, mm -hmm. um, and you know get that activity in. And it's it's really good for me from sort of a mental standpoint because I am able to be like, okay, here's me leaving the workday, processing everything <laughs> going on, and you know, and then being able to move into the rest of my life and kind of leave that behind because again, your brain needs time off of work in order to function yep. fully. So you want to be able to have that separation. So that's how it works for me. Okay. Some people work out during the day. Some people do it in the evening. You make the, figure out, make it a priority and then figure out how it works best for your lifestyle. And you wrote a blog post about this, um, you know, a, a few months ago in September, actually it's, it's called find time to exercise with these six tricks and i and, and went man this is such a great story and i tweeted the heck out of it all over the place and stuff and um but I just, if you could just give us like you know a few maybe not all six of them but you know just maybe a few of the top ones that uh, that you find that work for you definitely so um Time is a big one. It's exactly what I said. You know, you just need to make it a priority and then the time will come in and of itself. Mm -hmm. The next one is you might want to pay for something. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do at home for free, but if it's something that you're really having a hard time being accountable for, just seeing like, I signed up for this round of classes. I signed up for this gym and I'm devoting this money to it mm -hmm. often helps you be a little bit more accountable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we set professional goals and we always say, oh, set professional goals that are, you know, that are time bound and you are measurable and whatnot. But then we set personal goals like fitness goals and we don't really do that. So give yourself goals and make them measurable. So then when you look back and you say, OK, well, this month I said I was going to go to the gym, you know, three times a week and you didn't, you failed at your goal. So make sure that you make those goals really nice and measurable so you're, you're accountable for yourself, just like what you would be with any professional goal. Otherwise, again, it's a priority. Otherwise, you wouldn't do it. Um, and finally, find something you love. Like, you don't have to run just because everybody else runs. You don't have to, you know, um, lift weights because you heard that's the best thing. I think a lot of times people get really caught up in, like, the trendy thing of the mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. Everyone's doing kettlebells or everyone's doing <laughs> yoga. If you hate yoga, don't go do yoga. Like, play around with things. A lot of gyms and classes will offer, you know, free trials mm -hmm. or intro packages. Play around and find something you love because if you really like it, you're going to want to do it. And there's so many options out there for people now to be active that you really shouldn't be stuck doing something that you gotcha. hate. Gotcha. Gotcha. Are there, do you have any like account, any accountability mechanisms that kind of built in place to kind of keep you on that routine? Or is it just you're setting a, such a routine now that it, uh, you're kind of on autopilot? Well, um, you know, I think it's always nice to have like a deliverable end goal. So for me, you know, I have goals when it comes to competitions and what I want to do mm -hmm. and whatnot. And so, you know, when I look at how I structure my um, my training and my diet and whatnot, all that ends up coming into my goal. And that goal is important enough for me that, you know, it's not a question when I'm making choices. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think it's always a good idea, you know, if you want to do, say, like, I, I know starting in the new year, a lot of places will offer couch to 5K type things. If you want to do a 5K, then that's your goal. If you want to do, you know, find, again, find something you love mm -hmm. and then just really, like, give yourself a timeline for it. Right. And be focused on that. Another good thing is finding accountability partners, ah, um, good idea. whether that be a coach or a friend. You know, I have a coach that I check in with weekly, um, and those people can a serve as a point of objectivity for you, um, and b just kind of keep you moving. So they're the people that are going to be like, okay, you know what, you're just being easy right now. Like you need. <laughs> You need to get to the gym or right. no, you really do have time right now. So come on, meet me. Let's just go for a quick walk. Those people are super important in your life. 
It, well, it's like it's almost like an in inner work environment as well, because you work in teams and you have accounted people keeping you accountable and, and goes back and forth. So the same thing with staying fit. So you can be a success in your job. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Yes, that's yep. exactly it. You just need those people in your life. And I think um, another thing on the opposite end is people often struggle with people that aren't supportive of them starting and exercising and whatnot. And, um, and it's really important for people to remember that, you know, the reason why when we're in an airplane, they say, put your, your air mask on first right. and then someone else is that you can't, you know, people will struggle with family members saying, well, you're not caring for us or you're not spending enough time. Well, it's an hour a day, maybe half an hour that you're mm -hmm. taking away. And if you take care of yourself first, then you really can't take care of others or contribute to your job or your family yeah. or what. So that's another important thing. Like look for those people who support you and then also know that those people that maybe don't, that's a great way to kind of explain it to them and that's a way to talk to yourself. So no, you're not being selfish. You're actually being able to give more by focusing on what's good for you. Gotcha. All right. Wrap up question here for you, Laura. What advice do you have for others who may be stuck in a rut in this area and want to get started and want to get ahead? Because there's a lot of folks out there who are just, gosh, they're stuck on the couch or they're stuck in their cubicle and they just can't get themselves, you know, kickstarted to get going with something like this. What advice do you have for them? Um, so a couple of things. One, start small. Don't feel like you have to all of a sudden start running eight miles a day or spending an hour in the gym. T tell yourself, I'm going to do 15 minutes a day. Tell yourself, I'm going to do 20 minutes every other day and just start small. Give okay. yourself those small measurable goals to find, I mean, really find something you love. If you don't enjoy it, you're not going to do it. It yep. shouldn't be painful to get out there. Um, so find something that you really love. And three, start right now. Don't say, oh, well, I'm starting in the new year or, oh, well, I'm going to start after this mm -hmm. big over. You're always going to have another, oh, I'll do it when. Right, so right. Start right this moment and then and again and just, you know, do what you can and go from there. Right. Yeah. Don't start. Don't wait for the New Year's resolution thing because that <laughs> those rarely work out. Those rarely work out. So, yeah, start small, do it now and find something you love. Very cool. Laura, great message to end on. Thank you so much. Appreciate uh, all the advice and uh, keep up the good work. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome.